what's up fellas back here at it again with the uh, ace project uh got my switch panel made got a, went ahead and got some switches in it got uh, six rocker switches these two here gonna be a cvt fan and a radiator fan override i don't know if it's gonna be in that order but that's what them two are gonna do then we're gonna have a roof light bar front light pods upper light pods backup lights i don't know if they're all gonna be in there but i don't have them all wired anyways so probably, probably fan override clutch fan so i figured them maybe two should be over here by their own so i'll end up getting labels or labeling them myself or something but yeah we're also working on turn signals i got the polaris indicator switch here from uh, this is a genuine polaris product this is off their uh, international uh rangers and uh razors and generals and stuff turn signal right left it seems to work really good at this uh setup here with this shock strut i gotta touch up some paint but i went ahead and really can't see there yeah but i drilled a hole a screw in there i took a conduit clamp bent it cut it down painted it and bolted it on the top there and it's very sturdy it's not going anywhere it's got an integrated horn i'm not running a horn right now i don't have a wired but uh, I did have to customize. I redid my headlight harness. The Ace doesn't come factory with high beamable lights. It comes with, I got the battery disconnect right now, but the first click is headlights on, then headlights off, and then start. So if you're running this, your headlights off, back, your headlights are on. I wanted to maintain that, because if I want to have no headlights on, I can run in this position, but if I want headlights on, and I'm gonna go with the set of uh, like a 900 XP Razor headlights, LED headlights, they're gonna have a high beam in them, so I can just flip that forward and have high beam. Got it tied into the indicator on the dash here, which is right there. That's that works. I'm gonna go ahead and get to some of them LEDs off eBay for a right. If this was an international cluster, there would be a left and a right turn signal in the cluster, but I'm gonna go ahead and get little ones with arrows for each side there. And I'll go ahead and show you a little bit more of my wiring. There's a lot of wiring down here going on. This here. Of course, up in there is where all of my switches are. Comes around, got that nice uh, uh, tubing wrap on there. Comes around, hooks up to a key switch. Got a fuse in there for the LEDs and the lights. Comes around, I'm using, I'm cheating a little bit. I'm using, using st uh, Stinger 9 wire for a stereo because these are just gonna be uh, relay triggers. They come around here. And then I got this fuse block right here, which is the fuse block I'm using. I, Went ahead and got it started. It's going to mount to this. I'm gonna to have to remove it every time I need to put add brake fluid or whatnot, but that's not gonna be that big of a deal. It bolts right there, sticks under enough, be able to have enough extra wire and tie everything into the relays. And it's fused, six fused, uh, 14 gauge to all the fuses. It should be heavy enough, then it comes out to about here, and then it comes off in uh, all three or uh, 10 gauge three or 10 gauge so two 10 gauges and uh, both grounds come out three relays i don't really know why i did they're 12 gauge grounds i don't really know why i did two grounds but i did i probably could have just for ground relay grounds i could just left probably one ground it'd have been plenty enough but you never know have a little abundance there but yeah uh the headlight factory headlight harness on this vehicle is a ground circuit uh, it's key power all the time. When the key's on, the relay kicks on the fuse box and you got power to the headlights. The key switch actually gives ground to the lights to turn them on. So I required a relay up here to convert the positive to a, the ground signal to a positive signal. And for the high beams out in the switch, the high beams are ran through here. The headlights are still fused through the factory fuse block. So and this here wire is the goes into the display there. That is the the headlight uh, high beam indicator exciter wire. These here, this is a ground, and then you got the left and the right turn signal. Them are up here for the uh, LEDs when I get them. Uh, that's electronic flasher. Got that wired in there, all up in here. I figured this doesn't have to be totally totally waterproof. Up in here, I got nice water resistant connections, heat shrink and stuff like that on there. Because normally, if even if I'm gonna snorkel this in the future, I really don't need to snorkel this machine because I never wanna have water past here. 
because I don't want water up in the switch area. I don't want water up in the headlight or the display area. So I'll try not to try not to submerge it anyways, but these are pretty good relays and they should stay pretty dry. They're sealed up pretty good. They're a uh, LED store, online LED store, uh, fuse block and relays right there. That's the company. I've got it off Amazon. This is a sealed fuse block. So that'll be kind of nice just to keep it being so those maybe debris and whatnot shot up in here from the wheels and whatnot. It is kind of guarded with the uh, container that goes in here. So you got to kind of, I got to kind of watch because it's kind of a tight squeeze right in here. So yeah, I got to kind of watch that. It's kind of a tight squeeze, but yeah, I like these, uh, positive this black and this red. These are positive and negatives for the led flasher. The yellow and the blue are high beam and low beam for the headlights and the green and the pink are for the turn signals. I'm going to end up running a green and a pink and an additional wire to the rear of the unit because I've got these excess wires here. I'm running this tail light instead of the factory all red tail light. I'm going to drill into the side of that right where that R is and put a amber flasher in it. So this will flash, but I'm also going to tap into this connection and uh, make it have reverse lights. Well, they're not going to be, they'll be switched reverse lights. They won't be on when the switch kicks them on, which I would love to be able to do that, but this doesn't have a reverse output. But yeah, I think that'll help set it off a little bit, look a little better. And have the return signals pretty much done. If you guys are interested in these, these uh, work on your, any uh, Polaris that takes this style tail light. That's the uh, right hand side part number. And the left hand side part number is just seven and a set of an eight. So that's the uh, left hand side. Then we're both there. Uh, yeah, I've got my bumpers, my door extensions, and my rear box. I'm kind of excited. I need to get the front bumper installed here. The front, like, grill guard, the facial guard installed because I need to know what it's going to cover to put my turn signals in the front. So, I just got for them. I went ahead and got some eBay stuff again. Or not eBay, Amazon stuff. I used some clear. They're, uh, these are clear red ones for possibly the rear, and I got some amber ones for the front. But yeah, they're clear lens, so I think they'll look a little cleaner than the, the red and the yellow, or the red and amber lens ones. I think they'll look a little better uh, clear. Give it more of a Euro kind of look, I would think. But yeah, that's what we're doing right now. My plan is to get this, all the wiring ran, like right up here. I have the wire ran for the, head li uh, the light bar that's going to go up in here. I'm going to go ahead and run the wires for the light bar. That's go they're the two light pods that are going to go up in the front bumper and I'm going to go ahead and wire for the two light pods that are going to go up on the door latches. I'm going to do both those, get that stuff wired, then I won't have to worry about it. I'll have all that wired. Of course, like I said, I'm going to run the wire to the rear for the uh, backup lights with the turn signals. So that's all ran. Uh, I'll run an additional wire for the uh, CVT fan. So that's going to be in the back. So that'll be ran. Uh, I'm gonna have all that ran. I don't plan on putting much rear lights back in here. Only them two backup lights. I don't need a lot of light behind me. So uh, that won't be a problem. If I do add a switch and winch later on, it'll go up in this side because I got a factory match switch for a winch. It'll be on the right hand side. All my main uh, switches and stuff will be on the left hand side. Right now, for the lone beams, I'm just gonna tie them in power and ground here. End up making me a headlight harness. Uh, I'll tie a power and a ground into here and just run the low beam headlights for right now until I get my uh, razor headlights. They just bolt into this stud and the two on the bottom, you just gotta make sure you get the right stud alignment because they have one here and then one over here. So you gotta watch that. But yeah, like I didn't run the horn. I probably should have. And then I at least had that ran, but I can wire the horn in later on. That's not a big problem. I'll go ahead and cut, like, tape them up. But yeah, this ended up being pretty clean. Hoping the cover will fit on. Should fit on pretty good. Uh, didn't modify a lot of the harness for the headlight. I just, this one had plenty of excess uh, wiring that went to this headlight. So I just unhooked the clip that's right here. Ran it over. Ran it back up. And it's right here. And I bought a set of connections. I bought a set of uh, female male. Uh, what is it? These are... Uh, 
86s headlights and uh, that's where I got these pigtails from for right now for the low beam for these headlights right now until I get the razor ones I'll cut these off and then rewire the razor headlights the LED ones but uh, yeah that's what I did there I just tapped into that being that's fused power I went ahead and hooked it up to the relay and that's where the main headlights are going to get their uh, high and low beam power I may end up uh, putting an additional relay in later on to keep the low beam on with the high beam I kind of totally well I thought about it I didn't space it off I don't know how bright the headlights are going to be with the switching between the two so I don't know we'll see if it makes no difference I will go in and I can access all that right in here so that's not a problem because the low beam and the high beams are right in here I can tap into that it's not a lot of wire but or I could do it down here I might do it down here being as I'm here and go ahead and tap into it and put a relay in but we'll see this here's for the uh, MTX is it MTX? yeah the MTX stereo that's the overhead stereo that's for that my uh, diagnostic plugs can wrap around the power steering and hook right in there I moved that that originally was right uh, on this side I just popped this out flipped it around this used to be on the other side running to uh, right here I'm gonna end up putting that back there in the same area this is the other headlight plug I'm gonna bring it up and uh, I got a cap I took the other plug and just RTV silicone that on the back side and uh, that'll be complete that'll plug in and seal off this connector because I'm not using the factory headlight harness anymore so that should be fine but yeah that's what I'm gonna do there and uh, yeah, we'll end up, uh, that'll be pretty much it. Once I get all that stuff wired, it's a lot of wiring. Uh, I want to get at least, bird in here, damn birds. I want to get at least this buttoned up. I'm pretty much to the point now I can put this cover back on so I can put the door latches back on. Like I said, I got to put the front bumper on. I may do that. I do want to kind of get the relay box. Like this blue wire is not doing anything. It's just deadheaded, so I'm going to deadhead it here. These are all switch activated for the relay. I want to get that all worked out with the fuse box. Get the fuse box in place. Get all the wires ran out so I can access them. Uh, different colors. I wish I had a more wide variety of uh, colors for wiring, but I'm kind of limited. I'll probably end up putting a yellow for the clutch blower. And I'll probably end up putting a blue for the fan, for the radiator fan. And how I'm going to do the radiator fan is going to be pretty simple. I may actually go, because the radiator fan plugs in at the bottom there, unfortunately. It's right down here. I will probably go ahead and unplug that and get two weather pack connections, because that's just a weather pack connection, and build me a splice. Just build me a nice plug-and-play splice. Don't have to cut the factory harness and don't have to do any of that. It'd be pretty simple. Just plug and play splice. Where I'll tee in, obviously, my connection for my one switch here. So you can have your fan, CVT fan. Not 100% sure how I'm doing the CVT fan yet, but we'll figure that out later. And I don't know how I'm wiring my temp and oil pressure gauge, so we'll worry about that later also. Uh, yeah, I got a tie into the, the oil pressure sender, which... And this is pretty simple to get to. It's not simple to get to, but it's pretty uh, pretty easy to notice. That's like you can see it. It's actually right down here. You really can't see it. There's a plug. Uh, I can't remember 100% off the top of my head what the uh, the yeah the size is, but uh, yeah, that's where I'm gonna tap in here. This is the clutch inlet right here. My plan is this is a two inch, I believe two inch inlet. I want to get a two to three inch elbow and come over here and then get another two inch, two, three, two inch to three inch elbow. Cut that off there and bring it down and then put the blower right in this area. That's my plan. Don't know how well it's going to work, but we'll see. But yeah, that's what we're doing there. Uh, the factory wiring loom uh, comes up. I don't even know 100% oh yeah it follows 
I don't know where it goes, how it comes over. I don't know how it comes over, to be honest with you. I see it runs down this, and it must cut across the floorboard. So I gotta pull the floorboard out. I wanna follow the factory harness as best as possible. There's the temp sender for the uh, radiator temp. I'm probably going to just splice in this line here. I'll look in the book and see what the uh, what the uh, radiator. I may splice right in this the thermostat housing. I don't know yet. I might splice in somewhere in there to put my temperature. I might just splice right up in at the radiator. Not 100% sure yet. Might might put her in right in here somewhere. It's a pretty tiny line. Um, sadly, it's really tiny line. But I guess this isn't a 900. This is only a 570. So yeah, it should keep it cool though. That's all that matters to me. Yeah, I'd like to keep an eye on. I'd like to have a, temp a standalone temperature gauge, standalone oil pressure gauge, so I can have a speedometer and tachometer on the display there. It's not vital, vital to have them things, but I do like having uh, pretty much full instrumentation, especially an oil pressure gauge on these, being there's no oil pressure gauge on these from the factory, so yeah, it's kind of nice to have. But yeah, I've yacked long enough with this. Uh, I do like the braiding stuff that's nice even though you're not going to see any of this unfortunately it's just going to look really good when you have the box out that's all you're basically going to achieve there with this but it'll look pretty good i think it'll look really badass once i get the uh, xp 900 style head led headlights in it and get rid of these old halogen style bulbs but yeah uh i'm not sure where i'm going to mount turn signals i'm probably going to drill into maybe one here uh, maybe one on the outside, maybe one here, maybe one here. All depends on where the grill guard sets. That's my main concern. She's a little dusty now. She needs blown off. But, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get everything semi-pre-wired. And, yeah, go from there. A lot of the connections that are going into the fuse block will be, uh, they'll have an additional water connection, proof connection. Like, uh, some just some spade terminals for, like, the... I'll just get a bunch of extra wire for the fan, for the fan uh, relay, or for the fan override. I'll have its own. It'll just run and have extra loop. I'll just have it zip tied out the way because I don't know how quick I'll get to doing that. And but the clutch CVT fan will probably have a disconnect, so I can be able to pull the fuse block this way. My plan is to run everything this way so I can pop. My fuse, this is just a piece of angle iron I put in here, drilled two holes and bolted a nut, nutted this piece of angle iron in here, and I can bolt my fuse block. Then if I need to check or add brake fluid or service the brakes or whatnot, I can go ahead and pop this fuse block off, pick it up, set it off to the side. Then when I'm done, I can put it back, bolt it back in, and it sets there like it's supposed to. But that's my plan anyways. So yeah, I'm going to get back at it, guys. I'm going to get try to get some turn signals at least semi-wired i want to get them uh paired off to the back i think the back harness over here is going to be the disc it's going to have a disconnect over here all i know is i have the pink and the green they're going to the rear and a two other wires a backup light wire and then the cbt blower and for them i'm not going to run a ground with them i will find the it's their own ground in the back here somewhere i'm sure there's plenty of metal area to uh, go in and ground to so that's won't be a problem there like i probably end up putting amber light or not amber but a red light on the side here if there's enough room well yeah there's enough room i'll probably drill above this reflector put a red dot light on the side uh like i said the turn signal is going to be in this there might be a couple in the middle i don't know yet but we'll figure that out when we get there but yeah it's coming along slowly but surely. I haven't really worked on it, uh, but only a couple of days. There's probably only a good four or five hours in this here. So a lot of it's been plotting and planning, uh, and it's just been slow on and off. Been working on it, my brakes a lot and uh, just trying to get it semi started and uh, got a lot of my stuff, of course. So I want to be done with it when I'm done with it or when I leaves here. I want to have 90% of my wiring ran for my lights and my uh my lights and my turn signals i want to have all that stuff done so then the only thing i have to do later on is gauges 
and uh, clutch blower when I end up building it, but that'll be all wired. So I'll just be, have to modify the intake tube and whatnot there. That shouldn't be a big, big hassle. But yeah, I want to be able to just get out, have my lights wired up. I want to be able to take it out, take it for a spin. I want to be able to go out and just have fun with it. That's my plan. Uh, my razor, I spent more time on my 1000 razor building it and working on it than I actually did using it and having fun with it. So this is going to be a little different. I want to get all the work done up front and I want to go out and play with it. Like it's not going to be decked out as mad, uh, bad as the uh, 1000 razor was, but it'll be, it'll be a decent piece. So yeah, I just can't. I'm actually really wishing it was uh, back together this previous weekend because I really, really, really wanted to uh, drive it. I wanted to take it out, have fun with it this weekend. It was a nice weekend, and uh, I just did not have time to do so. So, and it was this, it was already apart, and I was like, well, crap. I'm not gonna go throw it back together just so I can drive it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish it up. Then I'm gonna take it out here one of these weekends and have fun with it. So, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.